What is up, my friends and fellow busy bees? This week, I wanted to address the elephant in the room and finally make a whole episode dedicated to talking about probably the product I've talked about and raved about the most on my Instagram and other social media channels because it's what I use nine times out of ten on my furniture makeovers, which is mineral paint. In today's episode, I want to discuss what mineral paint is, why I choose it over other paint mediums, and the tips I've discovered that give me the best finish with it. So it comes as no surprise to anyone that Fusion Mineral Paint is my go-to paint for my furniture makeovers. I talk about it constantly, I'm an affiliate with them, and you see it on the majority of my pieces. I will speak more about their products later on in the episode, but I wanted to make that clear from the beginning. However, this episode isn't specifically sponsored by Fusion, although I will include my code in the show notes of this episode if you decide you want to try them out. You can save 10% off of your order, and it helps to support me and my business by doing so. So thank you in advance for anyone that does. Okay, so there are all different types of paints, water-based, oil-based, latex-based, chalk paint, acrylic paint, mineral paint. It can get confusing if you're new to the world of furniture refinishing and don't know what to use, don't know what other people are using, and are just generally lost. So the difference with mineral paint, from my understanding as someone who is absolutely not a scientist, is that it uses natural minerals for its color pigments, which creates whatever color of paint you see in front of you. Those pigments are mixed with a binding agent, which could be a solvent and or acrylic resin, like in Fusion Mineral Paints products. The mixture of these means that you get really great adhesion and durability in the product, plus really vivid pigmented colors. Mineral paint is different from chalk-based paints or a latex paint that you might use to paint your walls in how thick it is as well. I find it's much thinner in its consistency. Is thinner even a word? But that makes it really user-friendly because you don't accidentally add way more product on your brush or roller than you needed as easily. This thin consistency helps you to adhere to my biggest recommendation for getting a smooth, beautiful finish, which is to do multiple thin coats that you allow to dry in between each coat to achieve a full coverage look, instead of trying to get it right away with one thicker coat. The paint is really versatile as well, so however you prefer to apply your paint, you're able to achieve a really nice flawless finish. I often hand paint my pieces with brushes only, but I have sprayed it in the past and it turned out great, and it also goes on beautifully with a roller. Since it is so thin, I also found that there was no need to water down the paint either to get it through the sprayer, so that not only saves time, but also any uncertainty that you might have about how much water to add in to get it to that proper consistency. I know when working with thicker paints, that's one thing that's deterred me from spraying a bit because I didn't want to either clog the sprayer up, but also was nervous to add too much water and have it be harder to get that paint back to a proper consistency. So whatever your tool of preference is at the moment, if you're like me and you like to switch it up every now and then, I'm in a bit of a roller moment at the moment, just grab it and go and you'll end up with an awesome looking piece. Another surprising thing about this paint to me when I first tried it out was just how opaque the color and finish was, especially since it is more of a thin formula. I guess because it wasn't thick and gloopy like chalk paint can be, I assumed that the color of the pigment would be more streaky and you'd need to build it up with more layers, similar to like a light coverage foundation that you would put on your face, but that was not my experience. For the large majority of their colors, I have tried quite a few in the Fusion line at this point. You only need like two coats of paint. I've had some colors that I've used where I've only added one coat and it looked like it honestly didn't even need another, but I did add it on because in good conscience, I couldn't sell it knowing that I had only put one coat on, but honestly, it looked great as is. Uh, My mind was blown. Now, there are a couple colors that I found that require maybe three or four coats, but those are far and few between in the line, and I can only assume that it has something to do with the pigments themselves, though I don't know for sure. I'm a makeup girly and have been for like decades now, which is a depressing thought to have, but I know in the makeup world that there are just certain pigments that are super hard to get full coverage out of because of something with the formulation. I think it's usually red for eyeshadows, but anyways, I've seen that on a couple colors that I've tried, but even still, it doesn't require you to use up all that much product of the mineral paint, even with the added layers, which is great. 
This is one of my other favorite reasons to use fusion mineral paint, because if I'm being honest, I'm pretty fucking cheap. Like, I certainly have gotten more comfortable in my adult years in treating myself and upgrading some things and putting money into good investments and things that I know are worth spending a little extra on. But on the whole, mama's looking for a sale or a promo code or she's holding off on buying. So it's a big bummer to me when I buy a big thing of paint, assuming that I'll get like three projects out of it, and then I need to use up the whole thing just to complete that one piece. And I'm like sweating halfway through, worrying that I might not even have enough product to finish. And believe me, it's not all that uncommon. It's happened before. But since the opacity, opaqueness is so great and the consistency is thin while still maintaining the opaque color, I've been able to complete like definitely at least two medium sized dressers before using just one of their like larger containers, the 500 milliliter containers of fusion mineral paint. And if you're doing smaller pieces like tables, you can definitely get like four out of one container. So that ends up being pretty great bang for your buck. And ultimately, it's the finish that I like best about it. It gives a really sleek, smooth, modern finish with a slight sheen, but there's nothing shiny about it or anything. It just isn't completely flat and matte like a chalk paint would be. And once the paint fully cures, which takes anywhere between 21 to 30 days typically, it has a really durable finish that is resistant to water and it cleans up really nicely. For anyone that doesn't know, I do live in Canada and we have some aggressive changes in the seasons and I painted my front door with fusion with no top coat or anything over it and it has held up great. It does have a built-in acrylic resin top coat, so technically you don't even have to add anything on top of it because the durability it offers once fully cured is so great. But for high traffic areas, I do always recommend adding an additional polyurethane or something similar just because it's better to be safe than sorry. But it means that the rest of the piece that may not get that additional top coat is still super durable and resistant to wear and tear, which is always preferred. So in addition to Fusion Mineral Paint, there are other brands that create their own mineral paint lines. One that's gained a lot of popularity over the past couple years that I've watched them grow is Melange Paint. Melange is how I would say it, but they're in the States. I don't hear them saying it very French, which I still have yet to try, but have heard tons of great things from people in the community talking about it. Another one that I have used a handful of times is Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint, which is a line from Dixie Bell Paint Company. I actually really enjoyed this when I used it as well, and some of the colors that they have are quite unique. There's one I like in particular called Hampton Olive. That's a kind of green-brown neutral, and it looks really nice and just like an earthier version of a vintage muted green. However, although the silk mineral paint is considered a mineral paint, I do find that it feels completely different than Fusion's formula because its shtick is that it's an all-in-one paint. So it's a primer, paint, and top coat all-in-one. So it is a much thicker consistency and it is quite opaque as well when applied, but it does separate quite a bit when it sits after a while. And I think essentially the top coat part of the formula raises to the surface. So I do recommend a really thorough mix before using it. Although this is recommended before using any paint anyway, but maybe give silk like another 30 seconds or so just to make sure that the formula is mixed in there well. So with mineral paints, I typically choose them for pieces that I'm looking for a sleek, modern finish, or really just as my everyday paint choice if I'm not doing any specific techniques that I'm trying out. One instance where I don't typically choose it over other options like a chalk paint though is when I'm looking for a more farmhouse look and want to do a lot of distressing. You can definitely distress fusion, but it is recommended to do it once it dries and before it starts to cure just because the finish really does start to harden and make it hard to pull it back. And since I'm always looking for the lazy girl hack, I sometimes don't get to the distressing stage right away. And for that reason, I'll usually opt for a chalk paint when I'm looking to achieve that finish, just because it's easier, it stays as is, it doesn't cure quite as hard. Like I said at the beginning, if you want to give Fusion Mineral Paint a try for yourself, I'll be sure to leave the link to save 10% in the description of this episode for you to check it out. And any of the other products that Fusion carries, they have a lot in there, as well as a milk paint line, which I do have yet to try, but I'm waiting for a nice wood piece that looks like it's looking for that shabby chic look so I can try and get some of the kind of crumbly look. I'm very excited to try that out. And if you're looking for some colors to try out from the Fusion Mineral Paint line, I'll quickly walk through some of my favorite go-to colors that they have. 
Midnight blue definitely has to be my most used color. If you follow me on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube, you have most definitely seen this one in action. It's described as a rich navy blue that is on the cusp of black and is highly sophisticated, working beautifully on both traditional and contemporary projects. I feel like this is a great neutral color that a lot of people wouldn't typically consider a neutral, but it pairs well with like most, if not all, stain colors and other paint colors that I've seen. Some combos that end up being surprising but work really well. Highly, highly recommend this one, and it goes on like a dream and it has a really great coverage. Bayberry would have to be my next most used color, and again, this is one that I consider to be a neutral, so I always recommend it for people who are feeling like they want to do color on their piece, but are sort of scared of how it will turn out, or if they'll end up hating it or getting sick of it. Bayberry is a safe but impactful choice, in my opinion. It's described as a deep, muted olive green and is perfectly vintage. It also pairs well with any metals. I've seen it look great with black, silver, gold, bronze, copper, you name it. It's really versatile and just so beautiful and looks either lighter or darker depending on the light it's in, which I love. Coal black is one that I often use because a lot of people like having black pieces in their home and it never disappoints. With this color and honestly all of Fusion's paints, I always recommend lightly sanding in between coats of paint just to make sure that you're getting the smoothest finish, but this color is described as their absolute deepest, darkest, boldest black that is intense and classic, and I think that describes it perfectly. It's a black. If you're looking for a black black, try coal black. And if you're looking for something dark but not quite that black, ash is a really surprisingly versatile color as well. It's described as a dynamic gray, and I would say it most closely resembles a charcoal gray, but again, it is dynamic. I've seen it pair well with both Pebble and Bedford from their line, which are very dissimilar colors, and I've even seen it look great against a light pink. It's really neat, and it can lean darker or lighter depending on the lighting that it's in. Sometimes it pulls a little bit more blue than gray. It's really cool. For lighter tones, Picket Fence is the white that I go for when I just want a bright white. It's described as their brightest pure white, so I do find that it's one of those colors that you need to build up a bit depending what color the finish is that you're painting over, but once you get it there, she be bright. It's also a great choice to have on hand to mix into other colors to lighten them a bit if you want to make a custom mix. Same with coal black, if you're ever wanting to deepen a color, that's a great one to have on hand as a mixer. And I'm a sucker for a sage green, I will never get over that trend, no matter how many people say that it's gone and over and done with. And they have a few different colors that work well in that family, depending on the shade that you're looking for. One that I used to love but is now discontinued was Sacred Sage. I have a one can that I'm like hanging on to for dear life and not opening until I find like the perfect project because there's probably like a black market for that shit now. But they now have Bellwood in their line, which is really similar. Bellwood is described as a versatile, sage-inspired, timeless green with a lush feel. For a similar color that leans slightly more gray in tone than green, Eucalyptus is a great option. It's described as a muted green with undertones of gray that is calming and serene, so it can definitely pull more sagey green or gray depending on the lighting. That's what I really love about all of Fusion's colors. Because of the nature of the pigments and that they're made with those minerals, they really are so versatile and depending on, you know, the color of the room that they're in, the color of the floors that they're next to, the color of the hardware you put on it, the lighting, whether it's direct or indirect or lighter or darker out the color can shift so much so even if you see a color and you see someone else use it and you're like oh I like that but you know I really wish it was a little bit more like this in tone I do just recommend you trying it out because it's so hard to know for sure how it's going to look in your space and with your lighting and you know without the magic of Instagram editing I could honestly do an entire episode on these colors, so I'll stop myself there. But if you ever have any questions, always feel free to send them my way by either emailing me or sending me a DM on Instagram because I love talking colors. Fusion also has a fan deck on their site available for sale, and it's a great investment for people who will be doing a lot of painting because 
The color swatches are very true to color, and they not only have their whole paint line in there, but they also indicate on the back the colors in their line that would pair well with them, which is super helpful. And there's also swatches for custom color mixes that you can create with the recipes to create them written on the back. Highly recommend for any finishers out there that use Fusion often. I don't know how I worked without one before, honestly. <laughs> Especially since they have such a wide variety of neutral colors in their line, it really helps you to see them and differentiate the differences between them. Differentiate the differences. Good English. So you can help see the ones that are similar, but also like the different tones that are in them. And something that you may not know about me I love little motivational messages. They always get me fired up and I keep a running list of ones that are especially catchy or speak to me in the notes app on my phone. So I'm going to end every podcast episode with one of those that I've noted down over the years in hopes that you leave our time here each week feeling inspired, motivated, and ready to take on whatever comes your way this week. So this week's Mel's motivational message is a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. Because if you're always sailing on a smooth sea, then when something happens that's out of the ordinary or unexpected or you face a challenge or a barrier, you don't know what the hell to do. So this is why I always recommend trying out new things, trying out new products that are maybe out of your comfort zone or something that you've been wanting to try, but you don't know if you'll get as good of a finish with it right away as the medium that you're most used to using. A smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. You want to be that skilled sailor in your business, your hobby, even if you're just doing these pieces for yourself. You want to be able to know that whatever piece you decide to flip, whatever makeover you take on, no matter what challenges or what unique thing that piece presents to you, because you've been doing this long enough, you know that pretty much every piece presents something unique about it or something new or has a unique characteristic or whatever that may be. They truly are all so unique. So embrace that. Don't let that be something that keeps you in your comfort zone, just looking for replicas of the same piece that you've previously done because you know that you can get a good result with that piece. Seek out new things, try out new challenges. That's the only way that we're going to learn. That's the only way that we're going to be able to encounter those challenges again in the future and not even have to take the time to do research on how to try to make that product work best or ask others how they encountered a similar issue in the past because you'll have that knowledge, you'll have that muscle memory, and you'll be able to tackle it without a second thought the next time that that thing comes around. And that's how you become an all-around skilled professional in the long run. So don't turn away from those challenges and those things that may be seen as a barrier. Take a step back and think, okay, what am I going to do? How am I going to approach this? And push yourself out of your comfort zone of sticking to those things that you know, like, and trust and try and discover new things because you never know if that thing that you try out, maybe you're someone that historically has only used chalk paint and you like chalk paint because you know chalk paint, but you've had your eye on mineral paint and you're like, maybe, maybe I could dabble. Just try it out. The worst case scenario, you buy a container of it and you give it a go on a couple pieces. You do some research on how to make it look best. If you are going to be hand painting, I'll link an episode in the show notes about how to get a flawless finish when hand painting your furniture. And I am speaking about fusion a lot of the time in that episode because it is, like I said, the paint line that I most commonly use. So if you do all of that stuff, you get as good of a finish as you can and you're like, you know what? I actually don't like it as much. That's fine. At least you know that you tried it. Then you can check that off when the furniture bingo comes your way and you can say, yeah, I've tried it. Not for me. Or maybe you find that you really love it and it was something that you didn't realize the difference that it could bring and you love the medium so much that it becomes your new go-to. A smooth sea never made a skilled sailor, so put yourself in those situations to acquire those skills and to show them off, honestly. And taking a step out of the world of furniture refinishing, remember that in life too, that a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. When we talk about resilience, resilience only comes from tackling those challenges, those turbulent seas that exist out in the big bad world that we live in but they're there to teach us things, to help us grow and evolve and help us to be able to surmount those challenges or similar challenges or things that might test us in similar ways in the future. We can stay home doing the same thing that we've done day in and day out, but nothing changes if nothing changes. So seek out those opportunities, those challenges, 
push yourself a little bit, see what you're capable of, because I can almost guarantee that it's much more than you are currently doing and or that you currently think you can do. You won't know your potential until you really push the boundaries of that and see what you're capable of. So remember that as you go into this week and beyond, seek out those not so smooth seas because one day you're going to turn around and realize that you are a skilled sailor as a result of having surmounted them. All right. Whoa, I just hit puberty. All right, that's it for now. I appreciate your time and I'll catch you guys next week.